Well, hello, farming friends, and welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. And looking around, you can tell we are finally back on North Brabant to uh, do a little work on it. Wow, it has been a while uh, since we've been here. I actually jumped on and thought, man, what do I need to do? And uh, there's so much that needs to be done. So uh, we're going to jump right into it, and uh, i got to get this guy started up because need to water my cattle. Now, uh, there was a very small update to Farm Sim a couple of days ago. And I have mentioned to you guys before that I was having problems with the water mod. And uh, it wasn't putting water into my um, containers for my dairy cattle and or sheep. Uh, I had that problem on this map as well as on Colborough Park. Now, I don't know if it was that small little update that happened in Farm Sim a couple of days ago or what, but uh, it looks like I can get water into my trough again. Uh, I haven't tried it on... Whoa! Hello, darling. Buddy. Okay. Thanks, anyways. Alright, so, um, as you can see, I've already got any water in this trough. And uh, I came on here and tried to fill it up several times, and I could not get water into it. Uh, but I did a little test map thing this morning, and I was able to get some water uh, going. So we're going to try it again, and hopefully it will uh, take some water. So I can get some water to my dairy cows. Uh, so they don't all die from dehydration. So we'll just come over here real quick, and uh, we'll start filling up our water container. As we do, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few things in the game. And uh, I'll show you where we're at if I jump over here to our uh, cows you can see our water level is you know really low 4800 liters so we're gonna take a little bit over to the cattle and uh, get them some water so where are we at what have we done what do we need to do um, when we last left we were planting uh, we had decided that we needed to do, I believe it was barley and canola, because we had just had a high demand for barley, and uh, that had wiped out our surpluses. So, I planted several canola fields, as well as uh, barley fields. Yeah, I'm having a hard time positioning this guy. Alright, water is headed out. Water level is rising in the tank. We are good to go. Water is working again. Yay! Happy, happy. Life is good. Alright, so, um... Sorry, get a little sidetracked there with that. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of runs here and put some water into these guys and uh, try to max it out and uh, get it filled up because it was getting quite low. Uh, let's look at where we're at in the game real quick. Uh, that's going to mess that up, but understand. So, here's what we've done. Uh, all of these fields have been planted. Slurry-wise, we're here on 36, 35, 36, the combined course. I need to get slurry in these two fields. Uh, and then I'm up here plowing. I believe I've already plowed 12. Uh, we need to start plowing 30, 29, 28. So I've got these three that need to be plowed. I'm debating on rather coming over here to 39 and putting some uh, corn in 39 as well. So basically what we did was if you drew a line like this, um, this is all barley. Well, we can actually go here. And uh, so these guys are all barley. And then this is canola. I would like to do one more canola field, which would mean I'd come in here and do this in canola. Uh, if I did that, though, that would take away a big corn field. I'd like to do corn uh, in these three, this one, this one, and maybe this one. So that's where I, that's kind of where I'm at. We own these fields, and we're not utilizing this one here, nor are we utilizing these fields over here. We could probably get over there and, and, and plant them as well. Um, so who knows, this might be our biggest planting yet. Uh, we may go um, with barley, canola, 
uh, then corn across here and corn up here for silage because uh, we do need to keep silage going. Why? Because we're almost out. Believe it or not, that big Mondo pile of silage is down to just a little bit. What was a massive heap is just a little pile, um, which is good. Yeah, we, it has been... Um, now, do we have a massive amount of money coming out of it? We've done pretty good. We've added some equipment in, and uh, we've just blindly spent on um, on other things as well. So I don't, you know, we bought all of our slurry equipment so we could do slurry, um, as well as we've hired a lot of workers um, to do the slurry um, that we wouldn't have, you know, been able to do just mowing grass and selling grass so uh, it's been a very good good uh, investment for us to do all that silage and I think we have to continue to do the silage uh, in order to maintain the profit margin that we have as well as uh, continue to uh, grow the farm so we would like to increase the livestock a little bit more. Uh, speaking of livestock, we got a lot to sell. Uh, we are already have a full trailer load of pig and a full trailer load of beef, as well as quite a few chickens. So if we bring up the um, small PDA again, I can show you that uh, we have in the swine mode 23 pigs ready to slaughter. Um, Excuse me. Come back. 23 pigs are ready to slaughter. 70 chickens. 24 beef. So we could make a run on all of those and sell those off. So that needs to be done. Um, as well as we discussed, I need to... Uh, I really want to get... Um, some more fruit trees put in we need to harvest the fruit trees they are ready to harvest um, so that needs to get done so there is a lot of work to do on this particular farm and uh, we'll get to it today so I think this should fill this completely up this time and there we are so I can drop that trailer there and head on down Hello there, buddy. Everybody good? Thank you very much. You ladies have a good day. So yeah, there's quite a bit of seed in the ground. Things are going good. Um, Alright, so what to do next? I think what I want to do is I want to run down here to the field and get some slurry going uh, so that we get those fields running because that's something that we can do mindlessly and uh, get that handled get our slurry operations going so if I remember correctly I actually recorded a course for placing this guy and um, I hadn't done it on all the other fields I'm gonna have to go back and do it on each and every field just to verify though let's look let's look let's look let's look let's field side placement 35 I did record one so uh, what I ended up doing and we talked about this before if you're gonna do slurry on a consistent basis you need to record some sort of course for placing your field side container in the exact same spot every time. Uh, otherwise, if you have an issue where it moves or, or you know, you've got to replace it again uh, to match the courses that you've already recorded, you don't have a way to do that. So what I did was I recorded a simple little course that just starts right here. Now I've done this a couple of different ways, but uh, for this particular one, I just put a pause mark in the middle of it. 
so if I come here, I go into transport mode and I hit drive course. It's going to pick up the beginning of the course. It's not going to pick up the beginning of the course because, you know, it's stupid sometimes. All right. Now, drive to the beginning. Um so I put a waypoint in the middle of it. So it will actually drive up here and stop the waypoint. And that should put the field side container right where I want it. And it puts it in the same spot every time. Now I can just disconnect it. And I can stop my driver, disconnect it, set it there, and then I can move on. Now, why did I put the waypoint in there? If I just record a standard trans transport course and I hit the stop at the end if I don't put the wait point in there what will happen if I'm not paying attention is it'll come down here to stop and it'll just turn around and go back to the beginning and do a loop so uh, you can do that two ways you can say well your drive course when you drive course you can say uh, stop at last wait point and activate it if you remember to trip that that's fine but a lot of times I don't remember to hit that button so if I put that wait point right in the center, what will happen is it will drive to the wait point stop. Then I can just disconnect my trailer and stop course play and all is good. Um, so there's just two ways you could do it, but that's the reason I did it that particular way. Now I know that every time that I put this trailer on this field, it's going to be in the same spot every single time. So that's the reasoning for that. All right, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to swap tractors out because uh, we're not going to be doing any seeding right now. Uh, I'm going to swap out the John Deere for the JCB. Pull this guy off. Stop. And I'll bring this guy up. So I haven't done anything other than just bring the field side container over here. So I do need to record a couple of courses onto it to get this guy started. And I think what we'll do is uh, just bring over here. should be a good place to start start recording our course our turn bring it up here I'm gonna fill up right there Is that all good And then just bring it into the field. Stop my course. And we'll save this. What have I been saving these as? It's been so long, hadn't it? Uh, slurry, refill. I think just refill slurry in the field number. Yep. So refill slurry, and this is field 35. So save that. Refill slurry. Fill 35. Save. And we are good to go there. Sorry, hit the wrong button. This is annoying to me. Anytime you type and you hit the, the letter I, uh, it automatically triggers that stupid PDA to pop up. That just really gets on my nerves. All right, so clear that course out. We're going to jump into fertilizer mode because that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I need to generate a course. Field 35 user defined is what that is. Verify my perimeter because this, of course, is a combined course that we did ourselves. It looks good. We'll say starting corner is going to be... Uh, let's make it right here where we're at. So that's going to be the northeast corner. And direction of travel will be... Do we want to go south or do we want to go up and down? 
I want to go east and west, really, honestly. So let's go southeast corner instead. And then we'll go to the west. Headlands will do three. Just because I found with this tanker, uh, three is really good for getting um, enough of a turning lane to do it. And just for giggles, I'm going to do the headland after we do everything. So generate course. There is our course. Let's look at where we're at. Looks good. Where are we starting? Way down there in the bottom. All right. So we'll head down there and we'll get everything set up. And the other thing that we need to do, and I need to get rid of this silly overhead so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, the only other thing I need to do is I need to add the refill course on to the end of this. So let's go ahead and get that done. Start at nearest waypoint and add in refill slurry filled. 35, add that in to the back of it. Two combined courses. Uh, activate four wheel drive. And what else do we need to do? I think that's it. I think all that's left is to switch over to the back and uh, do that. Go ahead and turn the machine on. drive course all right so that's doing its thing and we're good to go we can start this guy up see that's all that's left of our giant slurry mound amazing huh so get this guy fired up get him back to work let him do his thing and uh, yeah sure he gets started properly and doesn't drive around in circles the entire time there we go um, of course he glitched out right off the bat but he'll fix himself and that'll be fun all right we got our slurry transporter here I need to go ahead and fill it up and take some slurry over to our field so let's go ahead and fill it up. I'll just do this manually. And I could go ahead and record a course for it. Go ahead and have one in the bank. Make sure we got nothing going. Doesn't hurt to have it recorded, so... Uh, Probably going to use that same field side position 35 for 34 as well. All right, so let's drive on. Oop, 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 oop. Not using my head, am I? I just sat here and said I'll record a course, and uh, I'm not trying to record one. So let's go ahead and get started. So you see, we've got a little bit of slur of uh, silage there, and then we have that silage bunker there. So definitely, we need to get some more going um, so that we're going to be able to um, continue our operations. And um, not only do we need the silage for the money, but we're also going to need it to continue slurry operations. Uh, we do have quite a bit of slurry with the livestock. But we're not going to have nearly enough that we need to continue uh, to fertilize all the fields this way. So um, it's imperative that we keep the 
BGA running and now that we've started this whole little shindig so bring this guy out here make a little turn try to keep it in the right lane and uh, we'll head on down to the field and uh, put our slurry in I do a little bit of first person driving here. Maybe I can stay in the lane a little bit better than when I am in third person. Alright, so there's our container. And again, the tractor is going to be loading on the right side. So I need to come in on this side of it. Let me make sure that I don't have a collision with it so I need to give it plenty of room here I think that should be good it is while that is overloading I need to go get this John Deere and get it out of the field completely forgot I left him sitting there Let's move him across the street Oh, man, that ground reaction. It throws these tractors all over the place. So into this truck, I need to set my weight point. Almost forgot to set that there. And get that guy filled on up. I'll be honest, now that I've gotten used to this whole operation and how everything goes, I almost don't want to use course play to haul the slurry. Uh, just because I think, um, as I mentioned, I've had, I've had some issues with the, the cultivator on the back of the slurry spray spreader um, glitching out when this guy is trying to overload at the same time as it's trying to fill uh, honestly I think I can do it manually and keep everything topped off um, without having to use course play for this part of it but um, it doesn't hurt to get a, a course set up so that if you do get into a situation where you're doing something else and you just don't want to deal with it you have the course already recorded and you can just say here, take a load of slurry over to it and uh, and be done. So we'll finish recording this course up real quick. Go on in here. And stop recording. And I need to save this. That was field 35, correct? So BGA slurry to field 35. And I'll save that. Let's jump in here and do a little bit of organizing. So I want to say... Uh, BGA slurry to field 35. I want to move that up and drop it in our slurry folder for slurry delivery. There we go. Uh, let's see. Refill 35. I want to move that up and put that in the refill folder. Uh, are there any more that I need to move? Field side placements. I need to work on those. I'll work on that later. Uh, Alright, so that's enough organization for now. Uh, I'll just go ahead and leave this guy sitting right here. And when we need slurry, we'll, uh, we'll call for it. I can actually pull on up here. Let's look at how much slurry we still have. We still have 66%. Uh, and again, we're cooking as we go. So um, We don't have a ton in there, but we still have a decent amount. That will allow us to keep doing what we're doing. Go ahead and shut that down. Let that refill. 
And we'll move on to something else. Um, I can plow off screen. Let's get this guy fired up. And we'll head over here to Orchard. I gotta remember where I've got the uh, the fruit trailer at. I think I parked it. That's a good question, isn't it? I'm not sure if I parked it in the field over here or if I actually put it in the equipment storage area. Let's see. Let's see what our trees are at, by the way. Uh, so apples are 80%. That's good enough for harvest. Um, no trailer here. So I either parked it in the equipment storage or it's back at the farm. Let's check the equipment building first. So what I've done is the things that I don't really use very often, I've got them stored over here in this building um, that we own. And uh, that way I know they're over here. Uh, let's run in here and see what's in here. Um, I got this big guy. I don't even remember why I bought it. Oh, I bought it for grain transport. Duh, we bought that in the last episode when we were doing some grain transport. Um, it's not over here. So, where did I put it? Hmm. Do I even have it? There's a real question. I may have only bought that to do a video. Let's look. Let's see if I have it. Uh, let's see. Corn. Weights. Nope, oh, there it is. Where is it at? It is at the farm. Okay, so we'll go get that real quick. So, that's what we need to do. Um, thought I brought it over here, so it would be close to this, but apparently I didn't. Apparently I took it to the farm. Alrighty, so uh, head over here to the farm. We'll pick up our little fruit trailer, and we'll get this guy harvesting fruit and uh, selling that off. And we're going to place some new trees and get them in place as well, uh, just because I want some more. So let's talk a little bit about Apple Mod because I have gotten a lot of questions lately. Um, and from people who, I guess, don't really listen to some things I've been saying over and over and over. Maybe they missed them in other videos. Maybe they've missed them in, um, I haven't really said it in the Apple Mod stuff because I didn't know it at the time. Um, the game only allows you to have 64 fruits at a time. And I know I've said this before, but uh, unless you run, there is a mod on Maru's website that you can put in. It's a script that will kick you up to 128 fruits. But unless you do that, you can only have 64 fruits at a time. Anything that goes into a tipper is considered a fruit. That includes grass, chaff, hay, um, it's not just limited to the things that you put into the ground, such as oats and sunflowers. So if you look at your, your system and you say, well, I only have eight fruits. I don't understand what you mean, Moose. I should be able to put all those fruit trees in the game. No. Uh, a pig is a fruit. A beef is a fruit. Uh, anything basically that is harvestable, uh, the game considers a fruit. So remember, you can only have 64. So if you throw a whole bunch of stuff into your game and the, your game won't launch, it's a good chance that if you open up the console, it will tell you something about there can only be 64 fruits. You know, sort of like Highlander, there can only be one. Well, there can only be 64 fruits in this game. So keep that in mind if you're having issues with it it's probably not the upk it is probably you've got too many fruits in the game um so 
please keep that in mind uh, if you're having problems with Apple Mod in like, well, it was working and now it doesn't work with a particular map or something. It, it especially when you say to me, I had it working on this map and it doesn't work on this one. What version of the UPK does this map need? No, 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 it's not the UPK. It's the version of the map you're using probably has an extra add-on that you haven't accounted for. Uh, let's say this particular map, because it has the chicken fattening mod, I can only have... Uh, I can have less mods on this one than I can have on my big country. My big country only has pigs additionally on it, and it doesn't have multi fruit. So when I get on this one, I have to con I can't have nearly as many fruits running, uh, fruit tree scripts running as I can on my big country because on my big country, I, I don't have multi fruit and I don't have uh, uh, beef or chickens on it. So. Uh, I ran into an issue today when I started this one up. I had put a mod in for a new tractor. Was it tractor or pickup truck? Anyways, the pickup truck called for the availability of another fruit and wouldn't let me launch the game because of that pickup truck. So uh, I had to take it back out of the game and I, you know, oh well, you know, can't use it when I'm on this particular map. So just want to point that out the other thing I got a question about this trailer this crone insulin trailer if you're looking for it um, the link is in the Apple mod video uh, so if you just look for the Apple mod video uh, the link for it is there but uh, again you don't need a specialized trailer to do this now I like this particular trailer because it gets under the trees fine but you don't need a specialized trailer you can use any trailer tipper shovel in the game that will hold potatoes. As long as it'll hold potatoes, you can use it. Um, just keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to go ahead and set this guy up to uh, harvest some fruit. Now again, you'll remember uh, I've got this uh, set up here. So um, uh, anyways, I, I've got this set up to go through the field and do it. I've recorded the courses already. So if we come into fruit trees and we go to apple collection I can load in the apple collection and then I can record I can load in the uh, cell point fruit to cell point on the end of it and I should be able to go ahead and do this so back up here and get going and remember I have to come in here to Sorry about that. I had to uh, had to cough. I had to get rid of that. Sorry about that. All right. So if you remember, I have to come into my wait time and I have to crank up my wait time to about 12 seconds uh, per tree to get that to uh, to set up and work. So. All right. So we're just going to be in grain transport mode. And I'm going to go ahead and drive the course and let it go ahead and collect all the fruit up. And, of course, it's just going to drive around and do something stupid. Because it hates me. Nearest waypoint. That's all I said. So I guess I'll go over here to a different waypoint. And start there. Oh, you still want to be stupid. Come on, stop being dumb, computer. Oh, I need to make a hard lift. There we go. Come on up here and stop. Do your thing. All right, so that is uh, filling up and getting there. All right. And that is working. Now we can go check on our JCB. Who has finished clearing out the dreaded Bermuda pit of silage? Thank you. I have... Uh, Never been so happy to see a pile of silage go away. And I know that sounds silly, but yeah, I'm very happy uh, to not have to deal with that anymore uh, in this particular game. So now we just have to get over here and deal with this 
particular. I'm going to try something here. I've never tried this before. I don't know if I can move this with this front loader. I can't. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to record a course real quick for this and work on uh, this guy. So we can start getting all the silage out of this pit now and get it loaded up and continue our operation. Most of you guys have seen me do this a million times, so I'm not going to really go step by step on it. Um, if you do want to learn how to use uh, this particular um, function in the game, just uh, run over to my course play tutorials and you will see exactly how to do it. Um, I cover it both how to use it for the BGA as well as how to load manure into a uh, tipper. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty straightforward for you. And we'll have this come on around here. Get back to the start point. Stop it. And we'll save this as BGA2 front end loader. Uh, let's see, save, BGA, not bag, BGA, uh, uh, man, some of these mods are pissing me off, sorry, I can't type K without triggering that stupid, uh, uh, rental mod. BGA Bunker 2, uh, two cell, and then I'm going to put FL on it just to know that that's the front loader. Alright, and everything is good, just drive course, and that should do its thing. Everybody else is working. Hopefully, uh, all will go well. All right, so this guy is continuing to pick our apples up. Now, if you missed my uh, course play tutorial on this, uh, it's pretty straightforward on how to do it. It's utilizing the weight point um, and turning the time up on it. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, but zero is infinite and the and basically you'll stay at a wait point either for an infinite amount of time or until an operation has ended and then if you set the waiting time up to an actual degree like one second two seconds three seconds it only stays at a wait point for that particular amount of time so what i've done is i've put a wait point at each tree and it's going through the field when it hits the wait point it's going to sit there for that particular amount of time. Now, I've messed around with this enough to know that 12 seconds is a pretty good amount of time for it to sit and unload all the fruit out of a tree that's 100% ripe. So, um, that's why I'm using 12. I can get away with 10 seconds. If I go 10 seconds, it basically it loads the trailer as it approaches the tree, sits there for 10 seconds, that gets it down to about 20%, and then that last drive off gets the last little 20% out of the tree. Um, did, does it really bother me the difference between 10 and 20 seconds to try to be that much more efficient? Nah, so I just set this for 12 seconds. That way I know it's going to get all the fruit out of the tree and it's going to do its thing. While we're here, I uh, thought I'd look at a couple of other things. Uh, these trees here ha are fully grown. Uh, if you guys have never planted trees uh, utilizing the saplings that are uh, in the in the the pack, uh, this is what they look like when they grow up. 
Um, Y'all may remember we deforested this whole area, or a lot of this area, uh, early on in this map for wood chips because uh, we needed the money. Uh, and we had a high demand for wood chips. So you can see where we ended. We stopped right up in here. Uh, but we deforested quite a bit of this in order. But we came back and replanted being good stewards. And uh, those trees have grown up to full mature trees. It takes 10 days to grow a tree in this game. Uh, so that's 10 days in game. We've been... I've lost track of how many days we've been playing this map. But it's been quite a few. And so these guys are completely full now. So we have our trees back in this area. And that's a good deal. If we ever want to come harvest them, we can. But I just don't really see us doing it because we've got plenty of money. Now... We have all this area in this grass. This was originally a grass field that we made our orchard. And we have all this area over here that I've intended to plant, uh, but have not. And now that we have the money, uh, I'm thinking it's time to expand. So what I was thinking is we've got the apples and we've got the pear tree. Uh, we could grab some uh, maybe oranges and uh something else I, I don't know exactly but we could grab a couple more fruits put them in we could just extend the pears and make a big huge pear orchard um but i'm thinking i'm thinking a different fruit would be cool so uh if we jump into the store and look we've got um active on this particular map i have available to me um, the plums, uh, is that plum? Kirsch no, that's cherries. This is plums. These are orange. Um, and that's pretty much it other than the apples and the pears. Cause if you recall, uh, I'm on the threshold of not having enough, uh, fruit. I'm going to try that, uh, 128 mod and see how it works, but I have, I'm not going to rely on it. So. Um, so that's our option. We can come in and do that. And I'm, and I'm thinking that's probably oranges would be our next thing. I really like the oranges. Uh, so we could do some big orange trees and do quite a quite a few of them. Uh, they are $1,600 a pop, but I think uh, they'd be good. For uh, we could also do some strawberries if we wanted to put in some greenhouses. Now we do have manure that we're not utilizing. And uh, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to plop a few greenhouses down and uh, start utilizing that manure. But we could do that in another area because we do have a lot of fields that are just grass fields that aren't being utilized. So we could do some manure maybe uh, up by the, the farm and do some, uh, some strawberry plants. So I think what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to plant some orange trees. So if you've never seen how this works, it's pretty straightforward. You just, uh, you buy them. And then you come in here and I want to leave a lane so I can, oops, I hit my coffee cup uh, and it actually threw one down. So I want to leave a lane here uh, in between the, you know, top here for my tractor to drive through and not actually hit the trees. And I just want to space these out and uh, put them down where there's a decent amount of separation between them. I don't want it to be too crazy full. Um because we want to get good sunlight and we also want to have maneuverability uh, there's that fence there um, so we want to you know what I'm actually what do I want to do here I'm gonna put that one way back here and we'll turn underneath it so I'll put that real close to the fence line maybe yeah, just bring it back a little bit. We'll be good right there. And uh, then just come over, put a little gap. And we'll just come up here and place our trees just like so. And fill out our little new orange orchard. And it's not going to cost as much to do this. You know, we're probably going to spend 20000 but uh, we'll get lots of orange growing. And uh, 
We'll become Citrus Kings. The people of the area will be happy. They'll get lots of vitamin C. And they'll have us to thank for it. Mr. Moose. Farming extraordinaire brings vitamin C to North Rebel. Alright, so uh, let's put another row in here. I think we can get two rows in. We'll tie it up here. And then right up in here. Plop down our last little row. And now we have a full orchard. Uh, with uh, the orange, orange trees. Uh, last thing I need to do, I need to back out of this. Let's uh, get back into the store. I need to go into the garage. Find my orange trees and I need to sell that one that got uh, put in the wrong place. So, orange trees. Sell for $800. I got two of them that got in the wrong place. And you just gotta click on the stalk or the trunk of the tree. Alright, that looks good. Uh, that is good to go. Alright, so we got our trees planted. And everybody's moving. And it looks like all our apples are sold. And uh, our dude is just sitting here done. Varku. All right, so uh, now we just need to stop that particular run, change out our course, and we'll say pair collect and sell fruit. So we have two combined courses, and all I gotta do is tell it to drive course. Now if he gets here and stops, just say drive now and he'll go on. And I'll end up having to record a course just like this for all of the orange tree and get that set up. So I could put some warehouses in and put a kiosk up, but I, I just rather just use the sell point. Uh, for this particular thing um, uh, you can do it however you want to do it if you want to use this uh, kiosk you could have your route go to the kiosk fill the kiosk up but then you gotta keep in mind if the kiosk is full then you have to have it drive into the warehouse after it goes to the kiosk to put any extra fruit into the warehouse uh, and then come back out here so just keep all that in mind um, yeah, so that guy's doing his thing. Let's go check on everybody else. And make sure we're doing the right thing over here. He has filled up and he has glitched out. Oh well. I don't know what's causing that. Um, I can tell he's glitched out because see how the path right here is plowed? I just don't know what's causing that to happen, but it has happened so what's happening is when he gets ready to go and fill up it's not picking the cultivator up the cultivator is staying down and it's plowing all through so I, there's no truck sitting over there so ignore what I said about thinking it had to do with the truck uh, I'm guessing now it's the mod and uh, just periodically it glitches out and causes that luckily I recorded the course with enough distance between the fieldside container and um, and the implement that it actually got through there so that's a little disturbing a little disheartening because I do like this tanker but we can always get rid of it because this guy came out I don't know if you guys have seen it yet but under slurry tanks oh the new zoom hammer is out uh, it's only 28,000 liters, but man, it's massive and it's beautiful. It's all silver, glows, 
we might actually get it and uh, do a run with it. Um, this guy, uh, capacity on it. Uh, let's remember what the capacity on that one is. Back. Forward, forward. Slurry tanker. Uh, this one's 1,800 liters. Wow, so that's a huge difference. 2,800. Whew, man, that's a big tanker. Oh, man. Cost on it is realistic. That one's only 100. Uh, this one is um, uh, 31,000. We could do that. We could buy that and get rid of the other one. I mean, I do like this one. Um, but a tanker's a tanker in my point. Um, the bells and whistles on them don't do a whole lot for me other than they just their eye candy. Um, but we could unload it and get the Zoom hammer and give it a try. We might do that. We might, uh, the next field I do, uh, in my next video, we'll hook the Zoom hammer up and run it and see how that works. And if we like it, we'll get rid of this guy. Hey, speaking of the store, there's something I wanted to show you. I did go into the exit mile file. This is like a, uh, day of updates, right? I did go into the upset XML file and I changed the value for this guy. Um, it's now $10 a day in maintenance, not $500 a day in maintenance. I believe that to be a decent amount of maintenance a day because let's be honest, on a mower like this, over its lifespan, you're not going to spend more than $10 a day on it. You're going to pump a little bit of grease on the grease fittings and uh, in the bushings and check your blades. This is a disc mower, so it doesn't have big, huge, long blades like your lawnmower has. It has some discs that spin around on the inside, and then those have some little metal plates bolted onto them. There's usually two on each disc uh, opposite each other, and when I say little metal plates, they're only like one inch wide by two inches long and they're about uh you know uh god i don't even know what kind of uh of thickness on it is maybe you know not hardly anything less than a quarter of an inch thick uh, a quarter of an inch is way too much probably eighth of an inch thick but they're just metal little metal blades that as the disc spins around, that's what actually does the, the cutting. And when one of those wears out, you just unbolt it and bolt a new one in. Um, they're not really expensive. So the amount of maintenance that you've got going on this thing is not very much. Um, if you do have a, you know, a, a, a hydraulic cylinder and uh, go out, then maybe that's going to be a little bit more for you. But the maintenance wouldn't be ten dollars a day over the uh, over the life of the uh, the actual implement. So yeah, I crank that on down. Five hundred dollars a day is just ridiculous. So uh, I did fix that, and it was a real easy fix. If you ever wonder how to do that, uh, just open up your go find your John Deere Moco fold zip folder. You'll need to extract all the files out of it, and then there's one file in there that says uh, John Deere Moco. XML, X, and it's an XML file. If you open it up, you'll find down there where it'll list all the values and information about the particular unit. And under there, it'll say uh, daily or it'll say uh, upkeep or something like that. And you, you'll see where it says 500. You just change that to 10. And then um, save that particular file. Then copy that file. Open the zip file up for your MoCo. And just paste that file into the zip. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to overwrite the other one. Say OK, and you're done. Uh, just leave that zip in there. But you do have to uh, extract the files first so you can open that file up, change it, and, and save it. Uh, and then, but you don't have to put all those files back in. Just take that one single file and drop it in. So it's a pretty easy change. It doesn't take long to do it all. It took me maybe a minute, minute and a half. To do it and uh, it's a good change one that had to be made um, if I decide to keep this guy I could raise the, the price on it from a hundred dollars to something more around uh, 20,000 uh, which is more of a appropriate value for it but um, all right so we've got everything going 
and things are looking good in our field. What else do we need to talk about? We're coming up on an hour here, so we've gotten quite a bit done today on our field. Now, I do need to get these guys restarted. Like I said, I've got the three fields here that need to be plowed. Um, other than that, everything is plowed. And um, we're good to go. So this guy continues to just ride through and get our pairs. So much that needs to be done. So um, next video, we probably need to uh, go sell off some livestock. And um, continue uh, with uh, slurry. Maybe do a little bit of seeding. I don't know. Uh, we got to catch up with... I'd like to get all the slurry done and uh, then do the seeding. Um, and I'll finalize my game plan for what I'm going to do as far as each of the fields. Uh, I know we're good with car. I, I almost want to put canola in this field um, so that we get a little bit more canola because we do know we don't get that great of a yield on canola. So it would be nice to have a real good big field like this. Uh, as well as the two big field there. Um, but one more field wouldn't hurt to have. And then uh, then we could do this field, uh, the field across the way that is ours. We could go ahead and add it in, add the others in, and uh, just have a huge, massive planting. Again, the biggest planting that we've done so far. So this guy's working just fine, doing his thing. Uh, picking him up was a good pickup. Uh, you know? And again, that huge, massive silage bunker has yielded quite a bit of equipment as well as uh, money. I mean, we're sitting at a million six. Uh, we've paid for labor. We've paid for seed. Uh, we've paid for uh, tractor trailer. Oh. Uh, the tractor, the slurry tanker, the field side unit, the slurry sprayer, the slurry implement. Um, it paid for the trailer for the dry the dry trailer that is over there in storage. I mean, it's paid for quite a bit of uh, implements. Uh, so we've done really good uh, with our uh, Bermuda silage bunker. Uh, however, we don't ever want to use it again, I don't think. I would prefer not to ever use it again. So I wanted to catch this guy when it goes to empty, just so you see what I'm talking about with that implement. But I do think we'll go ahead and pick up the Zune Hammer and uh, run the next in, in uh, tomorrow's video. We'll pick up the Zune Hammer and I'll use it to cultivate. Um, and slurry the next field and we'll see if we have the same little issue with it that I'm having right now I'm thinking it could be because of the packing of these wheels um, now that I'm watching now that it did it and there was nothing there at the at the field side unit well now that I'm watching it, it's gonna pack up just fine it makes no rhyme or reason to me I mean, as you can see, it ran through there and did it, obviously, because that ground wouldn't be the way it is. But uh, now that I'm watching it, it's not going to do it. And it's going the wrong way. I oh, know it's going the right way. Ooh, I don't have enough fill slurry in there. Got to get some more slurry in it. We gotta get this guy fired up and get it on over there. And again, I'm just gonna manually drive this uh, and not follow the course play. No need to spend the money because I'm not really doing anything. Oh, a little wide. All right, so. Keep an eye up in the right hand corner uh, for how much money we make off the sale of that fruit. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? I don't think it tells me, though. I think I've had an issue with that not working. Ooh, getting a little squirrely there. Alright, so I see that guy rolling off. Either he got full or he didn't get enough full. And just went on back to work. He cleaned it out. Alright, so here we go to sell our fruit. And it's really hard to keep an eye on this and figure out exactly what we got fruit wise. Uh, but he's got 9,072 liters of pears he's headed over with. And um, if it shows us the cell numbers, we'll see it. Uh, but if not, 66. Now I know we didn't get $10,000 out of selling that fruit. It probably is a combination of the fruit as well as the, uh, probably had a dump over a silage at the same time. So anyways, but our fruit harvest is done now. I can stop this guy. He doesn't need to go back through the field. All right, so uh, I'm going to have to set up a course for the orange trees eventually. See how that thing just bounces all over the place with that ground response. It's just too aggressive for me. All right, we'll take this guy back. And again, I'm going to set this guy. This is pretty much going to be my a clean trailer. It's going to be a dedicated fruit trailer. I don't want to use it for anything else, uh, especially not manure or things else like that. You don't want to use uh, something like that with your fruit trailer. So... I'm going to bring it over here to the equipment warehouse and we're going to park it in there and uh, try and keep all my clean trucks here uh, or trailers and stuff here uh, and not have them getting mixed up with my manure uh, trailer. So yeah, we'll um, come back tomorrow, uh, continue on with our slurry, we'll do our little zoom hammer check it out and um we'll get ourselves uh some greenhouses probably get those set up and uh, who knows what else we'll cover again it's not good for me to plan the day out because i change my mind like the wind changes direction so i do hope you guys have enjoyed today's video we're gonna call it quits here because we are right at an hour or a little bit more I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video. Um, and of course, if you want to subscribe, you're a new viewer, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I do do a new video each and every day. So uh, again, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back on this farm again tomorrow working. And uh, so until then, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.